Hello everyone, it's Lani here and in today's video I'm going to be doing a Bob Ross tutorial. Hello, I'm Bob Ross. If this is your first time with us, allow me to extend a personal invitation for you to get your brushes and, and your paints and paint along with us each show. I'll show you how to put some of nature masterpieces right here on the canvas. Today I'm using an 18 by 24 inch double prime pre-stretched canvas, but you use whatever size you'd like. And I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid white. The liquid white is designed just to make the canvas wet and, and to make it slick. It allows us to actually blend color right here on the canvas. Makes your whole painting life a lot easier. So let's get started. Just put this mic back on. So I do believe we've done our first layer. So let's see what else Bob Ross has to say. A little thing to hope you'll enjoy. Let's start with a little two inch brush and a touch of the alizarin crimson. And we just load a little bit right into the bristles. Put a little paint out. And we just very quickly drop in just a little one part in the sky here. Maybe we'll have a little pink in the sky. I sort of like that. It doesn't take too long to use the brushes two inches wide. A little phthalo blue. <laughs> I like phthalo blue. It's a very warm blue. Very nice. Once again, just tap a little color into it. We'll just apply a little bit of a little blue. I've just got to catch up with Bob. He's ahead of me. Then we'll come back after we clean the brush and blend that together. Oh no! I just got turpentine all over me. It's okay. It's just a happy accident. Turpentine is burning my leg. Ow! Ow! Well, this is eventful, isn't it? Okay, so I had to quickly remove my tights and wash my leg and I haven't washed my brush. Let's have some water in this painting. I love water. Still water is always level. I think today we'll have still water. So pull from the outside in. Outside in. Something about like so. Something about like so. I'm just putting a little Prussian blue in each corner to darken it. Wait Bob, wait for me. More. And then, the most fun part of this whole technique is washing the brushes. Shake off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That's really the most fun part of it. And just beat the devil out of it. That's really the most fun part of it. Now, with a clean brush, and it's relatively dry from just beating it, we'll start in the light area and we'll blend it all together. And cut a little masterpiece on canvas with just a little bit of practice. Alright, take the corner of the brush and just pull down. Tap it, tap it, tap it. Really get in there and tap it and then lift upward. And that misty area turns out to be your very best friend. Take care of treasure. Okay, let's have some more fun. <laughs> some little trees back in here. Now these are a little closer. Here's a fan brush. We use a fan brush. Fan brush, fan brush, fan brush. We use a fan brush. Fill it full of color, both sides, both sides. Something like so. Instantly, we have some nice reflections. That's simple. And we can just drop in just a little waterline. Just a happy little waterline lives back in here somewhere. Don't worry about it. You don't always have to have a perfect vision in your mind of what it is you're going to paint. Imagination is. It's, it's like any other muscle in your body. Liquid white. Pull it out very flat, flat as you can get it. Cut across, okay? The more you practice, the better it becomes. Fan brush, little fan brush, fan brush, fan brush, fan brush, little fan brush. I found a fan brush, but it's a bit wonky. Yes. Load some color into it, both sides of the brush. Let's have a little evergreen tree. He lives right there. See? Just make a line, take the corner of the brush, make a touch. Make another one. And just sort of work from the center out. Here they come. Just sort of back and forth. I had a lady in class one time tell me it was like making Z's, the letter Z. She called them Z trees. Pop in some general indications of where they are. Because we don't make mistakes here. We have happy accidents. I just use that same fan brush. Fan brush. Little fan brush. I have a little family of trees. You can 
know if you've painted with me before, I think everybody should have a friend, even a tree. No big deal. Take the big brush, pull down, and then go across. And we have instant reflections. And put some highlights on our little evergreen trees. There they go. All right. That looks like a little island. Let's put some dirt there. A little dark sienna. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. This is your bravery test. Take the corner of the old two inch brush. Let's take a little bit of that color right there. And let's just begin laying in a basic shape here in between. But he's a nice tree. And we'll just tap in all kinds of little, little bushy looking areas. right there. Take a little white and right here. Let's get crazy. You know me. Let's get crazy. You know me. Big trees and we have one living in our world right there. Oh I feel like this tree is ruining everything. Bob. Why'd you have to go and put another tree there? This is a monster tree. Huge tree. And you could have done it with a two inch brush just as easy, but much quicker. I like the old fan brush. It gives you a little more detail. Here we go with my smaller tree, because I think he needs a friend. Oh, we're doing one skin. Let's put it into background color. We're going to put the indication just here and there of a trunk. Just what you can see here and there. We'll come back and separate all of this. Individual bushes, one at a time, one at a time. There's a happy little bush, it lives right there. I just want to come up here and make the indication, we can't see them, too much of them, of some rocks that live up there. They become part of the painting. Oh no. And we'll settle those right down into the painting. There now, see? Now they become part of the painting. And let's have us a little path. Just barely touchy. Barely. Let it graze. Let it graze. That easy. That easy. We go right up in here. No pressure hardly. And we begin working on shape and form. And we create a bush or a tree that lives right there. All right. I get letters every day from people all over the country that say they never believed they could paint. And they're doing it. Their friends and neighbors don't believe it when they look at their paintings. But they, they are doing it there. I'm going to put a little stick lives right there. A little old tree. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe this little tree died and he's naked now. Just a skeleton hanging out here. I'm gonna paint my skeleton tree. How did Bob do it? Just around about here. And these little details are what'll make your painting look a little more finished. Take your time when you're doing these and just drop them in here and there and there and wherever. It's a very simple painting that you can do. And shoot with that, I think we better have a finished painting. It's that easy. And we'll sign this little rascal. It's a very simple painting that you can do. And if you try it, I'd love to see some photographs of what you're doing. So if you have time, take a photograph sent to us. Let us hear from you. Until then, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless my friend. Would you just look at this masterpiece? Bob Ross, thank you. It's really good. I love it. I had so much fun painting this as well. You can probably tell I just really enjoyed just so I highly recommend if you're bored one day, just do a Bob Ross tutorial and paint along with Bob. But remember, you need a fan brush.